How's it going, everybody? I'm very happy to be with you again for a part three on overcoming witchcraft. Now, I'm very excited about this series for multiple reasons. It's been a very, very big couple of weeks, quite frankly. It's been a, a big uh, months and even year and a half uh, on my end. These revelations and these teachings that have been coming have not been something that just came to me out of nowhere over the last couple of days or couple of weeks, but it's something that the reason I've been able to, to learn so much in regards to part one on witchcraft, part two, now we're doing a part three, God willing, we might do a part four. And then we actually have a teaching from about a, two months ago called Overcoming Judas. That is actually what could be considered a part five of Overcoming Witchcraft. And the reason that I've been able to impart these things to, to you and uh, to speak so extensively on them is because this is not something that you just get when you read and you try to give it to the people. This is something that I've had to personally go through and overcome and continually overcome and I'm still overcoming today. The last year and a half have been, has been um, incredibly filled with spiritual warfare and witchcraft coming against me, my ministry, so on and so forth because of the things that we've been stepping into in the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, I thank God because over the last couple of weeks, there has been many people that have been getting set free from things with witchcraft that have been recognizing the schemes of the enemy as we've been talking about them. You know, in part one, we talked about word curses, which quite frankly is the most common form of witchcraft, um, if you ask for my opinion on that. But last week, Overcoming Witchcraft Part 2 is not necessarily the most common but it is the most deadly. It is the most deadly and it's the most destructive. And last week after I preached that sermon, actually before it, the Father told me, as I was preparing a few days before that sermon, the Lord told me, Nick, be ready. And I spoke to a couple mentors in my life last week and some, some, some close ministry friends and I said, you know, I'm about to preach a message that is going to really expose major schemes of the enemy. Um, and that has been setting a lot of people free as I've been used the last couple months in that area. And I said, right now I'm making sure that everything is put under the blood of Jesus, that my doors are closed and that I am just sealed in the Holy Spirit, uh, that I don't have any doors open to the enemy because the Father showed me very clearly, Nick, be ready. The enemy has his eye on you. The enemy wants to come and sift you. And so I thank God for my intercessors and for the people that are praying for our ministry because this past week the enemy definitely tried to come very heavily at us, but we're not going to cower down and stop speaking the truth to equip the people for the work of the ministry and exposing the schemes of the enemy. Now today I want to talk about part three of overcoming witchcraft. Now where we're going to be basing our understanding from is the book of Exodus chapter one. Now one thing I want to to start with, okay, from the New Testament, we have it in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, but also the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 14. It says that the scriptures, now when Paul was writing, he was talking about the Tanakh, or the Old Testament, right? Because really, at Paul's time, the only, the only thing in the New Testament that was circulating was the book of Matthew. So when they're talking about the scriptures... They're talking about the Tanakh, the Torah, the prophets, the writings, so on and so forth, all in the Old Testament. And Paul says that the scriptures cannot be understood by the carnal mind. They have to be spiritually discerned. And so, and then he says in Romans 7, he says that the Torah is of the spirit, meaning apart from the spirit, you can't understand the spiritual concepts to be growing up in, in, in nourishing the spirit and walking in the power of the spirit without revelations of the Holy Spirit. So when we read things in the book of Exodus or Genesis or Joshua or Judges or whatever it is, we have to be getting revelation from the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, it's very st it's stated very clearly, you know, warfare. We don't war against principal or against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of wickedness, right? This is Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 12. But whenever we're studying in the Torah and in the Tanakh, Whenever it talks about going to war against the Canaanites or going to war against Egypt or going to war against the enemy camp, we're actually talking about going to war in the spirit. The Lord is trying to teach us things. 
And so we have to take that understanding with what we're about to go through here, because this is a major form of witchcraft that if we are not prepared, it can even hinder us from entering into our promised lands. So I want to jump into Exodus chapter 1. And I'm basing my, my teaching off of verses 7, verses 7 through 10, although we might jump into verse 12, and then we're going to jump into Exodus chapter 6 as well, and we're going to kind of jump around the scriptures a little bit. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and read Exodus chapter 1. Now, this is when the children of Israel, they've, they've already come into Egypt, and they are about to be oppressed by Pharaoh, king of Egypt. It says, starting in Exodus 1 verse 7, it says, And the children of Israel were fruitful, and they swarmed, and they multiplied, and they became very, very strong, and they filled all the earth. Or the earth was filled with them. And it says, And a new king arose over Egypt, which did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more numerous and stronger than us. Come, let us deal wisely with him, lest they will multiply, and war will happen, and they will join our enemies and wage war against us, and they will ascend from the land. And so they placed upon them taskmasters in order to afflict them with burdens. And Israel built, built storage cities for Pharaoh, Pitom and Ramesses. And then it goes on to say, And as they afflicted them, thus they multiplied and broke forth. So I want us to notice what's taking place here. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, recognizes two things about the children of Israel. They have become more numerous and stronger than us. And if they go to war against us, they're going to overcome us, and they're going to be able to ascend from the land. They're going to be able to go free. So what does Pharaoh do? Pharaoh says we have to distract them because if they realize who they really are, if they realize how strong they are and how multiplied they've become, we're done. So we have to distract them with physical things. We have to physically burden them. We have to lay burdens upon them. But the more that they burdened them, the more they afflicted them, it says in verse 12, as I just read, it says the more they multiplied and the more they broke forth. What this is saying is that when we become very strong in the Holy Spirit, we start to multiply in revelation and become very strong in the Spirit, the enemy recognizes. As it says in the New Testament with the, with the demon with the seven sons of Sceva, the seven sons of Sceva tried to cast out a demon and say, in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches, I command you to come out. The demon speaks to them and says, Jesus we know, and Paul we know, but who are you? Notice how they not only knew Jesus by name, of course, King Messiah, but they knew Paul by name. The demons knew Paul by name because of how mighty Paul was in the Holy Spirit. So too it is with us. When we become filled with revelation and we start moving in the things of the Holy Spirit, the evil one knows you by name because you become a threat. And says, listen, they've become so strong that if they start to step into the things that they're, that they're knowing right now, we're in trouble. They're going to start casting out devils, cleansing lepers, healing the sick, raising the dead, raising up an army, and we're going to have no chance. So what does Pharaoh do, who's a picture of the evil one? The evil one directs all of his army, right? It says Pharaoh comes to his people. So Satan comes to all of his army, to every demon, and says, listen, we've got to focus on this individual right here, or on this group, or on this ministry. And we have to oppress them, labor him with physical burdens that could manifest in sickness, that could manifest with finances. However it is, just the same way Satan came against Job and came against his health, came against his family, came against his finances, came against his belongings, his house, all of these different things in the physical to get his attention off of the spiritual things and to focus on the physical burdens around him. And this is why Paul says in Colossians 3, 2, keep your mind on the things above and not the things of the earth. The evil one wants to try to burden you with the physical things. 
It could be with your children. It could be with your health. It could be with your finances. It could be with your ministry. Whatever it is, he wants to try to take your eyes, shifting off of the spiritual onto the physical to stress you out so that you don't focus and press in anymore to the things that God has called you to, to go into. And so here's the thing. In Exodus chapter 6, this is, this is why I say what I say here. In Exodus chapter 6, verse 9, listen to, to, to what it says here. And Moses spoke thus to the children of Israel, and they did not listen to Moses because of impatience and from the hard labor. Notice that. Moses is a picture of the Messiah. And the children of Israel are so burdened, and they're focusing on their physical burdens and their physical stressors so much that they become impatient. So much so that these two things, their impatience and their physical burdens, noticing the physical reality, the physical problems, hinders them from even believing the words of the Messiah. From believing the words of Moses, right? He's a type of Messiah. Believing the promises of God. Rather than keeping their mind on the things above and, and not the things of the earth, they're focusing on the physical, earthly burdens. And so now, their faith goes down. This is what the evil one wants. The evil one wants to come and try to control and manipulate your life in such a way that he distracts you from the heavenly things because you've become mighty. And I'm going to share some, some testimonies why I, I got all these revelations over the last year, but specifically over the last several weeks, the Lord has been downloading this into me so heavily. But before I get into this, we have to take this a little deeper. So notice we're talking about Pharaoh here. And when you become strong in the Holy Spirit, as it says in Exodus chapter 1, when you become abundant in revelation, when you become abundant in the power of the Spirit, the evil one directs his entire army and wants to come your way. Just like I told you last week when I was preparing for part two of witchcraft, uh, overcoming witchcraft, the father came to me and said, Nick, get ready. And I saw what I had seen was whenever I was preaching in the spirit, what I saw was that the enemy camp turned their head to me and started coming at me. And I'm going to explain this in a story over the, that's happened over the last year to year and a half in just a moment. But when we talk about Pharaoh, and we're talking about this right here. Notice Pharaoh is not representing an enemy that has to do with a person or even just one ministry. It has to do with a nation. It has to do with a country. It has to do over the entire people of the house of Israel. Which tells us something. In Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 12, Paul says we don't war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this age, and spiritual hosts of wickedness. So we have like these, these, this, this set which can be likened to say, say you think about law enforcement, right? You have constables, right? Then you have sheriffs. Then you have state troopers. And then you can even have something bigger, which might be like a DEA agent that can look over a whole country. So you have ones that can look over, you know, tiny neighborhoods and stuff like that. Then you have ones over cities. Then you have one over regions. And then you can have one over a country. This is the way the demonic works. Principalities are ones that look over an entire nation. That's what Pharaoh is representing here. It's a principality that says, I'm not looking at one person. I am looking at something that has the calling over an entire nation. And so Pharaoh says, we've got to attack these people, right? So when we think about Pharaoh, we have to think about Pharaoh as a principality. Now, which principality is this? It's the same thing in Daniel chapter 9, when Daniel's praying and the angel Gabriel comes to him and says, or uh, the angel comes to him, Michael, and says, hey, listen, when you prayed, you were heard, but the prince of Persia, meaning there is a demon that is looking over the entire, you know, country of Persia, warred with me, and it was tough for me to get to you, okay? We have to understand something about a principality named Leviathan, okay? I want to talk about this Leviathan spirit, because that's what Pharaoh is. Leviathan is mentioned five times in the Bible, okay? Job chapter 3, Job 41, Psalm 74, Psalm 104, and Isaiah 27. Leviathan in Isaiah 27 is a name for the Antichrist. 
But in Psalm 74, if you study Psalm 74, it's talking about the splitting of the Red Sea and the drowning of Pharaoh and his army. Pharaoh in Psalm 74 is called Leviathan. Leviathan is the toughest principality in the entire Bible. Job 41 goes into extreme and explicit, it is the most detailed description of Leviathan in the entire Bible. Job 41. And what we learn in Job 41, just as we see here, Israel could not overcome Pharaoh on, on its own. It had to be only by the Lord was there a deliverance. Same thing in Job 41. In Job 41, it specifically states, God tells Job, listen, Leviathan is someone that you cannot hurt. Not on your own. The only one that can take out Leviathan is King Messiah himself. Just like the Antichrist. Man is not going to be able to do anything to the Antichrist himself. The only one that's going to be able to destroy him is the Messiah when he comes on a white horse and a sword and, and flame of fire comes out of his mouth and consumes his enemies. So when we're talking about this spirit here, we're talking about a principality that's coming against us or coming against you. And it's not that because of you in and of yourself, it's because you have the calling to be a leader over nations. Okay? And so whenever you come across this, this spirit, you have to recognize something. Man, I cannot defeat this spirit on my own. Just like Israel. Israel sitting there waiting in Egypt saying, we cannot overcome Pharaoh without the Lord. It's the Lord that can, the Lord's the only one that can do this. Which means what? You have to be patient. And you have to remain in faith. You have to remain with expectancy. And you have to keep your mind on the things above. Because like Exodus 6, 9 that I just read a few minutes ago says, they could no longer listen to Moses because of their impatience and because of their hard labor. So when you're warring against this spirit, this is not a regular demon that you're going to be able to cast out. The only one that's going to be able to bring the deliverance is God himself. Which means you have to press into the word of God. You have to press into prayer. You have to press into faith and remembering the words that God has spoken. Moses said, God is going to free you. But they got to a point where the burdens became so heavy, they became so distracted with the physical burdens that they could no longer focus on it. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. I don't know how we're going to get healthy. I don't know how we're going to overcome this such and such. They became so involved in the physical labor that was placed upon them. You have to be patient and you have to pray and you have to know that God is going to come to your rescue. Okay? I want to explain some different stories about how I came across this so heavily. Uh, a little less than a year and a half ago, this actually came about. And I remember, you know, I, I've been in, involved with things in the Holy Spirit really since I came to the Lord, almost six years ago. Got baptized in the Holy Spirit five years ago this year, actually, in April of 2018. Started seeing mighty things, cancer being healed, you know, things being cast out, warring against witchcraft, so on and so forth. But a little over a year ago, it was about November of November of 20, uh, 2021, so about a year and four months ago, the Father started taking me very deeply into the secret place. And I started getting mighty, mighty revelation with things with witchcraft, spiritual warfare, and really the things that you've been hearing me speak on for over a year now. Deep, deep, deep revelation in the Holy Spirit. I kid you not, when this happened, hell broke out against me. Literally, hell broke out against me. Witchcraft after witchcraft after witchcraft, even ministries and big ministries, big leaders, started coming against me. And the Lord started exposing things of witchcraft to me like this. And I had hell break out against me. And you know, it even says here in the book of Exodus. He says here, Moses says to God in Exodus chapter 5 verse 23. He says, from the time that I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name. He has done evil to this people and you have not yet redeemed your people. What Moses said was, Lord, the moment that I started moving in the Holy Spirit, the moment I started doing what you called me to do, Pharaoh has only risen against me. It's only gotten worse. And so whenever I started pressing into these things in the Holy Spirit, I kid you not, hell broke out against me. The only reason I know all the things that I've learned that I've taught with witchcraft, 
overcoming Judas in that teaching weeks ago, um, overcoming part one, part two, and here part three and everything else, is because over the last year and a half, I've personally had to go through it. And he's taken me into the deep places of the scriptures and of the Holy Spirit. And so I remember one time there was a, there was a family, there was a, a man and a woman up in Arizona. And this was a little over a year ago. And I had not known them yet, but they said, hey, we found your ministry through such and such, but we no longer watch them anymore. We only watch you. And they said, uh, they named a certain time. It was about November of what I told you. And they said, they said, at this time, the Lord showed us something about you. And I said, really, what, what did he show you? He said, at this time, your teachings became filled with the Holy Spirit. And I said, that's actually the time when the Lord started showing me this, 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 and this. And as soon as this happened, like I said, all these things started coming against me. Our views on YouTube, we used to get hundreds of views. Within a day, we'd have well over 100. And then by the time the next teaching, I mean, we'd have hundreds of views. We were getting to a point where I could barely, on our, on our YouTube videos, where over the last year, sometimes even breaking 100 views barely happens over weeks. And it's like, we barely have over 100 views? What in the world is going on here? I started getting sickness coming upon me left and right. A year ago this month, I kid you not, last February, starting last February, I started having sickness after sickness. Now, if you know, if you know me personally, you know one thing. I take care of my health probably better than anybody you know. I say that with confidence. I eat a whole food plant-based diet, take my vitamins, get my blood work done multiple times a year. I am very active with fitness and nutrition and superfoods and this, that, and the other. Started having health problem after health problem after health problem after health problem, and the doctors were not able to explain it. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what this is. One doctor tells me it's this. Another doctor tells me it's this. Another doctor tells me it's this. One thing after another. And so finally, the Lord starts to show me Exodus chapter 1 and take me deep into these things and says, Nick, this is what you've been going through. Well, here's what's interesting. Starting in February last year, I called one of my mentors and I said, uh, it's actually a dear mentor and friend who I've had teachings on here with, Pastor Todd up in Iowa. And I called Pastor Todd, I said, Todd, I gotta share something with you that the Father showed me. I said, don't ask me how I know, I just know that I know because the Holy Spirit showed me. He goes, what's that? I said, I have a principality hovering over me in my ministry. This principality has been, has been trying to afflict me and, and come against me ever since January or February, right? So this was last year. And he goes, really? And I said, yeah. And I said, I'm going to war against it. I'm, 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 I'm going hard against it. I'm not backing down, but it is crazy. I cannot tell you the amount of warfare that I'm having right now from every angle. So he starts interceding for me, he and his wife. For the next three months until probably May, maybe June, three or four months, every month I keep calling him, Todd, you're not going to believe this man. The Lord keeps showing me I have a, a principality that I'm going to war with right now. Nothing is breaking. I don't know, you know, I'm not sure what to do. I'm pressing into the Lord, so on and so forth. I get to Iowa in May last year and Todd's son, who knows nothing, by the way, Todd, Todd keeps our phone calls between he and I and his wife. His children, you know, don't know all these different things that I, that I share. So I move up there and his son, who is very prophetic, who was just living in Israel actually, tells his dad, dad, I got a word for Nick. I saw something in the spirit. And he tells his dad and his dad goes, you have to tell Nick that. So his son comes to me one afternoon and says, Nick, I saw something I need to share with you. I said, really, what's that? He goes, I saw a principality around you like this with its arm closed, with, with its hands closed. And if you actually look at Job 41 going like this, it's talking about the scales that are closed shut in Job 41 about Leviathan. And I said, you said what? He goes, I saw a principality hovering over you and hindering things from being able to get to you. And I told him, I said, I said, Derek, do you know what I've been telling your dad every month for like the last three or four months? He goes, no, what? And I said, I've been telling him that I've been going to war against a principality. It's been hovering over my ministry and trying to come against me and go to war against me and everything that is, that is related to me ever since I started stepping into these things in the Holy Spirit that God started sending me to. The same way when God sent Moses and as soon as Moses was commissioned, 
all Egypt broke out against him. And he goes, yeah, well, I'm just here to confirm what you saw. And I go, my goodness. So all I knew was a principality. I didn't know this, that, or the other. So then I come to Houston. And there's a, there's a ministry down in Houston. And the husband and wife, I go to dinner with one night. And we're sitting there at dinner. And this woman and this man, this is our first time going to dinner. Okay, they've met me two times prior um, one of which was just because I was, they invited me in to lead uh, a certain thing for ministry. And the second time was, was very, you know, pretty quick. So this is really like our first time to really sit down and, and kind of really get to know each other. So we're sitting there and I don't even get to finish my sentence. I tell them, I go, I've been going to war against a principality. And right whenever I speak the word, the wife goes, it's Leviathan. She didn't even let me finish my sentence. And we kind of look at her like, what the, what in the world was that? And she goes, I don't know how I just knew that, but it's Leviathan. And I said, the principality I'm going against is Leviathan? She goes, yeah. And I said, interesting. I said, I'm going to have to ask the Lord to show me a little bit more on this. So as the months go by, especially this year in 2023, the Lord is diving me deep in Exodus chapter 1. Ever since December, I've been in Exodus chapter 1 every week. Exodus 1, Exodus 1, Exodus 1, Exodus 1. When the children of Israel became numerous and strong and mighty, Pharaoh looked at them as a threat and said, we have to oppress them. Okay. Then the Lord starts to show me the five times that Leviathan is in the Bible, one of them being Pharaoh. And all of these things start to get connected from a year ago. A year ago, I knew there was a principality. I didn't know which one. About six to eight months ago, ten months ago, I have a woman that tells me it's Leviathan. Then the Lord months ago brings me to Exodus 1, and then I realize Pharaoh is a type of Leviathan in the scripture. I mean, you just, you just can't make this stuff up. The point is, is that over the last year, I have pressed in so heavily that the Lord has been unraveling it more and more and more and more. And I have had things come against our views, just being very honest, things with, with financials or with people or with other ministries uh, things in the spirit, things with sickness, all these things coming against me that literally make no sense out of nowhere last year, one year ago, this month. And so the Father started showing me, whenever I got all these revelations downloaded, the Lord started showing me how to go to war against witchcraft. And so I started pressing in to the scripture so heavily to where my mind has been consumed with the things above and not the things of the earth. And as I began doing that, there has been a peace and a faith that the children of Israel had lost in Exodus chapter 6, verse 9, because they were focused on the hard labor and they became impatient. There was a season where I was becoming very impatient with the Lord. I was so sick of everything I was going against, I didn't understand it. I'm like, Lord, I don't know what else you want me to do. I don't know what else you want me to do. I go, our views are going lower. I go, this is coming against me. This is coming against me. What, do you want, what else do you want me to do? And so I remember one time, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a human, and I get discouraged, and I have to get re-encouraged by brothers and sisters in the Lord and mentors in the Holy Spirit. And I remember I asked the Lord, because I did a teaching, and the teaching was hardly getting any views. And not that I do teaching for views, but at the same time, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. This just doesn't make sense. And so I remember one Saturday night, this was, it was this year in 2023 on Saturday night, I said, Father, I said, I know what you've called me to. I said, but I'm just a little discouraged tonight. And I said, I'm just going to be honest with you. I would really appreciate an encouraging word from you that I'm, I'm doing your will with the broadcast. I'm doing broadcasts every week and I'm sharing messages that I'm not getting from the flesh. You're giving them to me in the Holy Spirit. I just don't understand what's going on. So I'm just asking for encouragement to make sure that everything is from you and that I'm walking in your path and speaking the things that you want me to speak. I kid you not, that was at like 8 o'clock on a Saturday night. At midnight, we get an email into the church from a woman in Sri Lanka, halfway across the world, that said, Pastor Nick, I want to thank you so much for the teachings that you have been producing through Revelation Church. I've been sending them to a woman, to a, to a sister in, in Christ, and she's been watching your teachings two or three times over. They have been equipping her so much with things in the Spirit and understanding the Scripture. The next day, I get the same thing from somebody else. The Lord answered me so graciously in that moment because I'm needing encouragement from the Lord, right? I'm starting to become impatient. I'm like, Father, what is this? 
And so I, I'm sitting back about a week ago, a week, a week and a half ago, it's, 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 it's uh, the evening time, and I'm sitting there studying and in prayer, and I thought to myself, the, the thought just jumped to me, and I go, when was the last time I turned on the TV? Because generally, a lot of times, what, what I'll tend to do is, you know, I'm, I'm in ministry and with the Lord and doing different things all morning and all day and sometimes into the early evening. But then in evening time, I'll go and, you know, just turn something on, watch some TV, eat some dinner before bed. And, and I go, when was the last time I watched TV? I go, it's been, it's been weeks since I've even turned it on. And I started going through my schedule. I looked at my schedule and I started going day by day. What have I been doing? What have I been doing? Every single night, I have been doing something with the Lord. Deep in prayer. Going to a prayer meeting. Going and ministering somewhere. There has always been something. And I've been consumed with encouragement. Even though I've been getting extreme warfare, I've been consumed with encouragement. My mind has been on nothing but things above. Nothing of the things of the earth. I've been consumed in the Holy Spirit. And the Lord showed me, Nick, I'm going to be the one that's going to set you free from this. There's going to be a mighty redemption, but keep going. It is because of the calling that God has called with, upon our ministry and, other thing, and people around us that it's not just you know, something for one person or two people. Pharaoh and Leviathan don't come upon somebody that's just individual. There's other demons to be able to do that. Pharaoh is a principality that comes upon you when you have to do with shaking nations. The things that we have been doing here and the people around us that I know are being oppressed in the same way, they have mighty, mighty apostolic callings that is not just for one or two people or even one ministry, but to lead many, many people. And the more that you press into the things of the Holy Spirit, the more the enemy camp will know you by name. The more the enemy camp will turn its head to you and see you as a threat. This is a spirit of witchcraft. It's a spirit of Leviathan. And the only one that's going to be able to redeem you is God himself. So how do, we, how do we maneuver with this? If we can't personally overcome it, it's only the Lord himself. Job 41 says, Psalm 74 says, we see throughout the Exodus narrative. We see in 2 Thessalonians 2. We see in Revelation 13. The Antichrist spirit, Pharaoh, Leviathan, it's all the same spirit. This principality can only be defeated by the Messiah himself. By God with an outstretched arm and a strong hand. We have to make sure that we do not focus on the earthly burdens. Exodus chapter 1 and Exodus chapter 6 verse 9. They could not listen to Moses anymore because they were impatient and they focused on the physical burdens. Keep your mind on the things above. Do not get stressed on the things here. No matter how hard it gets, I know it's easier said than done. Do not focus on the things here of the earth, on the physical calamities and struggles that the enemy camp wants to consume your mind with every day. Press into prayer. Press into the Word of God. Devour the Word of God. Okay, it says in the book of Jeremiah, it says, Your word came to me and I devoured it. I think this is in Jeremiah 15, 16 or 16, 15, one of the two. He says, I devoured it. I have been devouring the Word of God, left and right, every day, morning, night, in prayer, pressing in, and it's been bringing such a faith, it's been brewing such stability in me, even though, like I said, I'm still getting hit with so many things right now, that there are times where I might just be like, oh my goodness gracious, the warfare is intense, I might need to lay down for a minute, or you know, whatever it is, but there is such a strengthening because when you become mighty in the Holy Spirit, the enemy fears and trembles, lest they go to war against us, like Pharaoh said, and they come to war and they will win. Friends and family, I encourage you, stick to one another. Find community. Get immersed in community as much as you can. If you can every single day, I encourage it. But get in the Word of God. Get in prayer. Understand this revelation deeply. Be encouraged. Because we're exposing the plans, tactics of the enemy camp. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2.11, we shall not be ignorant of Satan's devices.